Good morning. Um, moving south in the range a little bit for blue catfish. We're getting down in some Texas waters today. Um, this is some work we, some modeling work we've been doing down in Texas over the last couple of years. Um, with the idea of simplifying our regulation suite in Texas for managing blue catfish. Um, like I said, we've been interested in uh, catfish management in Texas over the past decade or so, and which led us to come up with a catfish management plan um, for the state with the overlying goal of um, trying to provide a diversity of high quality catfish fisheries in Texas um, based on blues, channels, and flatheads generally. There's two main goals we came up with in that plan. One is to increase opportunity and access for catfish anglers. Um, and the second is to develop sort of best management practices for how we can manage our catfish fisheries in Texas. The second goal there is kind of what um, led to the project I'm going to talk about today. About 10 years ago now, we had a statewide catfish angler survey in Texas. Um, and part of that survey identified four general different types of catfish anglers in Texas. About 60% of our anglers are strictly um, interested in catching a lot of fish. They don't really care what size or whether they keep them. Um, about 20% each or 18, 17 to 18% are interested in harvesting fish um, or 17% harvesting preferred size fish, which is basically bigger. They want to harvest a lot of big fish. And then finally, you know, just around eight or 10% of people said they were interested in the trophy angling aspect. Um, the objectives of the modeling project I'm gonna talk about today were to com compile the existing data from, from Texas and also across the range, um, growth data, population data, creel data, um, and use that in a modeling framework to evaluate um, our regulation suite in Texas with the goal of identifying um, some options to meet different management uh, goals. So if we want to manage for harvest or manage for high catch rates, trophy fisheries, etc. Um, I mentioned there's three main species in Texas where we're uh, considered uh, managing or that we manage for blue catfish, channel catfish, and flatheads. Um, but for today, I'm just going to talk about our blue catfish data. Now, in terms of data that we use for the modeling effort, we use both fishery independent and fishery dependent data. As far as the fishery independent data, we collected, uh, we, we compiled all the data for Texas on age and growth of various populations um, and some size structure data we had. Chris um, reached out to the Catfish Committee of Southern Division um, and other people around the country, and we got a bunch of data sets on age and growth around the country um, to sort of get an idea of average growth and, and the range of growth that we could use in our model. Um, and then we used creel data primarily from Texas that was, but we also had the creel data set from Oklahoma um, that we used for some of the creel modeling. Um, in terms of the model, we took a little different approach than the FAMS model that a lot of the guys have been talking about this morning. We, uh, we use an age structure dynamic pool model in R uh, uh, we modeled a virtual population that was tuned to about 100,000 individuals on average um, in the absence of fishing. So then we took that population and applied various levels of fishing pressure on top of it, modeled it over 100 years, and then iterated that 1,000 times. The scenarios we really wanted to look at where we wanted to see how the population would respond to the various um, length and bag limits, both the ones that currently exist in Texas, and then um, what what it would, what kind of regulations it might take to have an impact. And so we had, we looked at a couple different slot limit lakes, or slot limits. Um, one thing that we wanted to look at in this in this modeling effort was how bag limits would affect um, the modeling. So in, right now, the statewide limit in Texas is. Uh, 12 inch minimum size 25 fish daily bag so it's pretty liberal it's blues and channels managed together um, depending on the reservoir some some have both blues and channels some are primarily blue some are channels um, but we want to look at the creel data and see what proportion of, of 
any given trip or how many fish on average are in the Creo. So if any given angler interview, um, if how many, what proportion of angler interviews catch how many fish? So we had about 1% of any interviews that actually caught the 25 fish bag limit. Um, if we get down to about 10, uh, about 20% of the anglers are, kept, are keeping a 10 fish bag limit and so on, it goes down from there. So we wanted to model how it would affect a change in bag limit would affect that underlying exploitation rate. Um, the other piece that we used was we wanted to look at size specific exploitation and this was a little bit touched on this morning too. Um, the preferred size that we're seeing in, in Texas is around that 18 to 24 inch size range or that's the real size of the uh, blue catfish that people want to keep. We had some data from Lake Tawakonee which is one of our um, good um, catfish fisheries in Texas that we were, where we had population size structure data based on gill net surveys and we also had creel size structure so we were able to look at um, the differential exploitation of those medium sized fish. People seem to be either not catching or releasing the fish below 18 to 20 inches. They're preferring the catch fish in that 20 to 24 inch range. So using all that, we modeled the statewide regs and then we looked at the currently existing Texas regs and a couple of proposed relaxed slot limit, which basically is allowing um, some amount of take in the slot to varying degrees. We looked at two fish, five fish, or 10 fish within the slot limit, which was 20 to 30 inches in our case. In terms of model outfits, outputs, we want to mirror um, the different angler desires. So we looked at population effect on population size to simulate what catch rates would do. The more fish in the population, you're gonna have higher catch rates. Um, harvest and yield were based on the harvest in, um, motivations. And then in terms of size structure, the trophy size structure, we looked at the number or proportion of our fish that were over 30 inches. Um, just to walk you through a couple of uh, graphs here. This is the population size. We looked at, uh, I forgot to mention the growth. We, we took the average growth of about 250 populations we had across the range, um, and that was our average. We did like plus or minus one standard deviation of that in the model to get fast growing populations and slow growing populations. But you can see in the graph here that um, on, at the far right end of the screen there is what our current regulations are. So that's a 12 inch minimum, 25 fish bag. This is what we'd expect of the population at that rate. And as we go back to the left here, you'll see that if we reduce the bag limit to 20 fish, 15, 10, five, how much effect that's gonna do. And the continuing trend here is that until you get down to about less than five fish bags, we're not seeing much impact. So unfished population, 100% remains. It, depending on your growth, you're somewhere between 75 and 85% are gonna still be there even under our fishing scenario. In terms of harvest, again, it's the same curve, although in re reverse, you know, we're gonna have the most harvest with the most liberalized uh, bag limit. We're seeing we're about 3,000 kilograms per year uh, per 100,000 fish is the max on the fast growing populations. Yield is the same story. Again, until you get down here below five and then even then below two or one before you really start having an impact because most of our anglers are only keeping one or two fish or up to 10, 20% up to 10 is the, was the key one. Finally, we saw a little bit more um, with our trophy fish or over 30 inch fish. Um, in the unfished conditions and the fast growing populations could have up to 26% of the population over 30 inches. Um, we knocked that down under our current regs to about 11%, which is still pretty good. I mean, we have a lot of, uh, if, if the fish are growing good, our exploitation is low enough that's not gonna make much difference. On average, with average growth, we are down here at about 11% unfished. The fish were over 30 inches. Um, 
We knocked that down to 3% at the end at, with 25 fish bag. So to summarize their current regs, or our current statewide regs, under average growth scenario and a typical exploitation rate, which is, was about 8 to 10%, which we based on um, the Tawakini data, our, our population size is about 76% of unfished conditions. Um, we're harvesting about 3,000 kilograms or 3,000 fish per year, which represents about 5,000 kilograms. And the number of large fish uh, over 30 inches is about 3%. So we do have several um, regulations in Texas that are meant to, um, well, they, we have different purposes. I wanted to, the next thing we did is we looked at our current regulation suite. Um, these are the regs currently on the books in Texas. The catfish one and two there are uh, five fish bag limit. Those are meant for uh, put and take fisheries in our community fishing lakes. We do some stocking of channel catfish and channel blue hybrids. Um, so those two regs aren't meant for these big reservoir fisheries, but they theoretically could be used for that. Um, catfish three is an increased bag limit only. That's in um, uh, Lake Livingston and the Trinity system. Um, we also have uh, a, the typical one over 30 with the, the 15 inch bag. I think that's the Texoma reg. So that's the Oklahoma, Texas boundary regulation. Um, the uh, catfish six is a tail race fishery. That's one of our other more restrictive ones. That's below Lake Livingston in the tail race where we have a reduced bag. Um, and a, a size limit, two over 24 inches. Um, number seven is an experimental regulation. This is one that you may have heard before. Tib, John Tibbs has given some uh, talks about this over the years, but that regulation was a high slot, 30 to 44 inch um, no take slot, looking at a few reservoirs in Texas trying to see if we get grow fish through the slot. Essentially, we've never had one harvested above the slot, I don't think, John. One fish now. <laughs> so it's basically zero harvest over 30 inches. Um, and then eight is for stunted populations. We're increasing the bag, trying to keep uh, limited harvest of some of those older fish. 10 is the Louisiana Toledo Bend Reservoir, so that's another boundary water that's increased bag and five over 30 inches. Um, and finally, Catfish 11 is our most recently um, implemented regulation. That, that's our Lake Tawakini regulation that um, came in about four or five years ago now and um, was aimed at uh, a quality slash trophy fishery. So there, the reg is, um, it's five, it's supposed to be five fish from 20 to 30, two over 30. It ended up being written as seven fish over 20, only two of which could be over 30. So it's basically seven over 20. Um, so how do all these regulations fit through, uh, come out in our model? Um, as you can probably guess, because our bag limits are so liberal that there's not a whole lot of play in these data. We do see some differences if you crank it all the way down to five fish per day from 25. That's these uh, first couple of regulations. You can see we reduce harvest a little bit. We save a few fish. Um, and then we actually see more trophy fish just because we've reduced the exploitation on those populations. But no one really, there, there's not much angler um, there, there's no buy-in from the anglers to reduce it that much from 25 all the way down to five. Um, the rest of these is sort of the same story. You'll see um, very little impact of any of these regulations on, on the actual harvest or population size. We're seeing marginal, in, in, marginal changes in population, harvest, and yield. A little bit more on the number of big fish this was the tail race fishery that had a 10 fish bag um, and the si a two, uh, two over 24 size limit. We do see that that's effective for increasing the number of big fish in that fishery. But that fish, that 
Um, reg is only in one limited place in Texas. Um, the other one I wanted to point out was our Tawakini reg. The idea behind this reg was to sort of maintain the current uh, situation in Tawakini. It's a, a well-known fishery. There's a lot of big fish. There's, there's tournaments on Tawakini and there's harvest, um, both harvest um, and trophy fish there. So we used our data at the time to try to maintain the status quo. You'll see that we do see a little bit of an increase in the potential for big fish, even with that Tawakini reg, we go from about two and a half up to about three and a half percent of the fish are over 30, but it's not a huge difference. The last thing we wanted to look at is this sort of idea of a 20 to 30 inch slot limit. So we wanted to reduce harvest in that preferred size range in order to grow fish out into the, the larger size range. Um, and you can see that as we crank down on the harvest within that slot, I should say we had, we allowed unlimited harvest below the slot um, and unlimited harvest above the slot for the purposes of these numbers. But because of the way the size specific exploitation worked, anglers were less willing to keep, the, or the exploitation on the smaller fish and larger fish was smaller. Um, they really wanted to target those preferred fish. So as you, as you crank down on it from 10 to 5 to 2, you'll see you, you, have, you start impacting the number of fish you save. The yield stays about the same, but we end up, if you go all the way down to two fish in the slot, we can double the number of large fish in the population. So the take-homes for this uh, talk are that most Texas blue cat populations are likely un underexploited. We didn't find any much evidence of, we don't have any actual exploitation data for Texas, but based on the high, uh, Mitch will talk about a couple of high harvest lakes we have that might be questionable, um, but we think with the 25 inch, even it's basically unlimited harvest now. So any, in order to change the population, we're gonna have to, um, really come down on the bag limits. Um, typically, anglers are selecting for fish above 18 to 20 inches, which is gonna limit some of what you can do in terms of link limits. If you can't get the fit people to keep the smaller fish, um, you're, you're gonna have less impact. And I said a 25 fish is functionally similar to unlimited bag. We only had one, I think we had one or two anglers um, one or two, one percent of anglers ever keep the entire 25 fish bag limit. So you're not really impacting anything um, at that level. Again, the minimum length limit that we currently have, 12 inches, because anglers really aren't selecting even for the 12 to 16 inch fish, we, we don't think that's having much of an effect. We recommend getting rid of that and just letting them take whatever they will take. Um, on the small end. Um, and limiting take of the 30 inch fish doesn't make much difference either in that there's such a small proportion of our population that few anglers are going to keep more than one of them anyway. So we, we were left with the most bang for your buck in that 20 to 30 inch size range. Um, and that's what we are moving forward with in Texas. I'd like to thank a whole suite of people that have provided data and input on this project, and I have, think I have a minute or two for questions. Yeah, I think we've got time for a quick question. Yeah. We've done, we've done a little bit, a uh, limited, uh, one, of the, one of the regulation suites, like the one that was aimed at a stunted population, the, the district manager that was on that was really encouraging the anglers in that lake to try to take um, some smaller fish with, with, with some success. I mean, he was able to increase harvest. They got rid of the 12 inch minimum and he could get, and some harvest was occurring in the nine, 10, 11 inch size range. I don't know that we have 
evaluation of whether that has impacted the growth, but we we have one example of that yet. Okay, well, thank you, Nate.